Hey there, CPO. In this video, I'm going to go over basic uh, analog voltage telemetry setup in the Tyrannus using a FreeSky receiver. Uh, I was surprised at how challenging it was to find out exactly how to do this. The information's out there, it's just buried in the pile of stuff that is the internet. So it was a little bit hard to find the things that I needed. Uh, so hopefully this will bubble some help uh, to the top for you guys. So I'm doing this on my Tricopter build. Uh, so everything's already pre-installed, so bear with me as I go through this. But uh, you're going to need your transmitter, you're going to need a reliable multimeter, you're going to need a flight pack or some sort of a battery source that we can uh, calibrate against, you're going to need your receiver obviously, and then you're going to need your voltage monitor that's going to uh, connect to your flight pack. So I'm going to help you set up the telemetry screens for your model. So if you're in the main model screen, if you hold the page button for a second, it will take you to the telemetry scene that we're about to set up. And basically I have several different voltage and timer values there. But let's look at how to get started with adjusting that. Let's go into our model uh, menu and then I hold the page button down uh, for a long hold twice to get me to the telemetry screen. However you get there is fine but it's in the model settings not the general transmitter settings. Telemetry is per model. That also means that whatever settings you set up in one model don't automatically apply to the other model. So you're going to have to copy those settings around. So we'll start off by looking at the A1 channel, which is the analog input channel number one uh, for uh, the receiver that I have. And I guess, real quick, let me show you the receiver I have. So this is the FreeSky D8R2+. Plus, and it's an 8-channel receiver that uh, has analog and digital telemetry capabilities. It's got two analog uh, inputs on the right, and then the left side is a digital uh, input for connecting to an external uh, sensor hub. So I'm going to be taking advantage of both the A1 and A2 ports. However, A1 has a capability to actually be a built-in voltage monitor of the actual receiver itself. So uh, whatever voltage it's getting from your receiver flight pack or your KK board or your BEC, depending on how you're powering this, mine's coming from the KK board, um, I'll be able to monitor that internal voltage through A1. And that's done through using a jumper to connect the A1 signal pin to the center positive pin. So you can see here the jumper is in there. Uh, and that actually comes pre-installed by default. So with that in, instead of monitoring external voltage, um, I can monitor the internal voltage. So going back to the transmitter, you can see my A1 channel. Um, I have it set at 13.3 volts as a range. And that's probably the most confusing part of all of this is the whole how do you calibrate um, what you're getting as an input. So uh, I'm going to go through that um, and hopefully I can simplify it for you. So the maximum voltage input your receiver is expecting to see on an analog telemetry port is 3.3 volts. Uh, obviously uh, some of the batteries and other uh, things we'll be monitoring may put out more than 3.3 volts. So we, we use a voltage divider to basically divide the voltage up in a known ratio and then recalculate out what it would be. That way we can keep the actual sensor voltage low even though we're measuring a higher voltage source. So at any rate the internal voltage divider on the uh, FreeSky receiver is a 4 to 1 ratio. So in order to figure out your maximum potential voltage, you're going to tell the transmitter through that voltage range setting uh, what your maximum expected voltage would be. You take 3.3, multiply it by your ratio, and we have a potential of seeing 13.2 volts. That's the starting value for your range in that uh, telemetry setup screen. And as a matter of fact, when you start a new telemetry screen uh, on a fresh model, that's the default value for A1 because it already knows what the internal ratio is going to be. But if we go back to my telemetry setup, you can see I have my range set at 13.3 volts, so 0 0.10 volts higher than the default. And that's because I calibrated that range setting and made the adjustments accordingly. And I'll show you how to do that. Now it does seem strange to have a voltage range of 13.3 volts when we're only reading an actual voltage of 4.95 volts. Um, but that's because we have to take into account the voltage divider. So if we take the 4.95 volts and divide it by four, that's the actual voltage that our sensor's reading because it's going through that divider. So the way we calibrate our voltage sensor is just to check the actual voltage 
and then compare that against what we're seeing in the transmitter and then adjust as necessary. So remember I told you that the default is 13.2 volts as the range. Mine is set at 13.3 uh, simply because I've already done this process. But let me show you how I do it. So what we want to do is measure the voltage that our receiver is seeing. We can either do that at the receiver or at the receiver source. Uh, in my case, the receiver source is the KK2 board, uh, so it should be outputting approximately 5 volts to my receiver. I do this by checking the voltage on the positive and negative uh, pins from one of the channels on the receiver side of the board. So you can either do this by just pulling uh, one of the servo wires from the board to receiver, but the safer option would be to check it from the receiver side, since it should also have the same voltage coming from the channel on the receiver. So pull the same cable, but instead of checking the pins on the KK board, I'm just checking against the cable coming from the receiver. It's a lot easier to do without uh, accidentally touching the pins. But either way you go, you do not want to short those pins together. All right, so if I remember what I got for voltage, it was 4.95. So basically what I need to do is just verify that my transmitter is showing the same value. It showed a little bit low with the default setting for a range of 13.2, but if I change it to 13.3, then I got the 4.95 volts on the display that I was expecting to see. Once you have that, you can also set your low alarm value and your critical alarm value. And then you can set all kinds of other custom functions and custom switches based off of that information. We won't go into that in this video. If you need to, you can make some fine-tune adjustments by 0.05 volt at a time using the offset value. You have to get it as close as you can in the range, but if you need to, you can make some minor small tweaks with the offset value. All right, now let's go take a look at the A2 channel, which I'm going to use to externally monitor my battery voltage. In order to get that done, we'll have to talk about how we actually get that voltage from the external battery source. In my case, uh, I'm using a very simple uh, voltage sensor which is basically a voltage divider. So one end of this connects to the battery and I have a uh, kind of a rig here with a balance charger port uh, on the boom that I plug in the balance port of the battery to. It feeds the voltage in on this side and then uh, the other side feeds out uh, into the actual receiver where it picks up the now divided voltage. It's important to make sure that you're dividing the voltage properly for your cell count. So if you look at this thing, uh, and, and I'll show you the instructions here, there's different positions depending on what size battery you have. Now mine came default from the factory with it set on a 3S position. Basically you can see the red wire is soldered to the 3S tab. If I had a smaller battery, then I would use a 2S position or a 1S position. They do give you an extra piece of shrink wrap to use if you do need to change your voltage division ratio. But since I left mine uh, as it was, I just left that spare piece on it. Uh, I'll hang on to it. Maybe one day I'll change it. As you can see from the instructions that came with the sensor, it's got a recommended voltage option of 1S, 2S, or 3S. And it depends on your maximum LiPo uh, cell count. So I'm using the 3S option, which means I can have up to a 5S LiPo. But if you'll look, my division ratio is 6 to 1. So I need to make sure I know that whenever I go in and add my uh, telemetry screen uh, changes. I could move it down to the 2S setting for a max LiPo count of 3S and use a 4 to 1 voltage division, which is what the internal sensor is using. Uh, but like I said, I'm just leaving it where it is because I don't have to change it. And here's where in the manual it shows you you need to change your soldering points of your sensor wire to the battery should you need to do that. Now going back to our formula, the maximum input that the receiver is expecting to see is 3.3 volts. Our voltage divider right now is set at 6 to 1 ratio. So we're going to take that 3.3, multiply it by 6, and we get 19.8. That's going to be our range setting for uh, A2, at least initially. And then we'll calibrate it and figure out if that's exactly where we want it. And as you can see here, when I did my calibration, I came out with 19.9 volts because uh, I needed to raise it just a touch. But to check the calibration, I'm just going to pull my balance port, check and see the voltage for my battery. And as you can see here, I'm at about a 12.4 volts. Plug this back in so the receiver sees that signal. 
and then we look at the transmitter and as you can see 12.4 volts is what the transmitter is showing. So I am properly calibrated with a 19.9 volt range. Again, it started out as a 19.8 as a starting point, uh, but uh, bumping it up 0.1 volts gets me exactly where I want to be. And then of course, setting the low and critical alarms from here. Just for fun, let's go back and pull that voltage sensor from the receiver and actually measure what type of output it's providing and then see how that fits with our math. So we're getting 2.05 volts from our sensor. So 2.05 times 6 is 12.3 volts. And that's still just a little bit low. That's actually the same value we get if we use our default range setting. So that explains why we have to raise our range value because the sensor is reading just a touch low. And it sounds like a lot, but we're really only talking about two one hundredths of a volt in variance. All right, so the last thing I need to show you in this video, now that we've got our voltages into the radio, is how to display them on the screen. So if you scroll down below the telemetry uh, source information, you'll see some screen information. You can have several screens for telemetry, but basically it's as simple as going in and telling it what you want to display. So I have everything on screen one, and you can see if you just click any of these blank areas, there are a lot of things to select for what to view on the telemetry screen. I happen to have my internal Tyrannus battery voltage, A2 and A1, uh, RSSI, and then a couple of timers. I'm adding in a couple extra ones here just to show you how really easy it is uh, to, uh, to add in. So then, once you have your telemetry set up, when you want to actually view that when you're flying your aircraft, from the main model screen you're actually flying from, if you just hold down the page button for a second, it will take you to the telemetry screen. I usually do that right before I start flying. That way I can always glance down and see things. Now, of course, with a radio like Tyrannus that can do audible alerting, it's not necessary to always look down at the screen, but it is kind of nice when I don't hear any alerts just to verify that things are on the right track. I'll definitely be setting up some custom functions and... Uh, do some data logging with my telemetry data in the future, but that's outside the scope of this particular video. Well, that's it for now. Uh, just the basics of getting analog voltage telemetry into your Tyrannus, both using the internal uh, capability for the FreeSky receiver, as well as using an external voltage sensor. So I hope that helps you if you're wanting to know how to get started. Uh, lots more to go with telemetry. Um, this is just the very tip of the iceberg. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.